Google Maps is like the King Kong of the contractor lead generation world. It's that one marketing piece that if it's working, then you really don't have to do anything else. And so the number one goal of everybody that asks me for advice is to get their Google business listing working. Now I've done tons of videos about this. I even did uh, a video in my foundational marketing mini course series where I go into depth about how to set this up each part, what to put in there. So I'm not gonna do that in this video. This video I'm gonna talk about the five things that most people wouldn't really know about unless you're deep in the SEO lead generation marketing world and you do this stuff all the time and you've experimented with tons of listings like I have, then you really probably don't even think about this stuff. But these five things that I'm about to share with you, if you do them well, I can guarantee they will improve the results that you can get. So first let's talk about a guy named Dan. So Dan is a friend of mine, he's a carpenter. And Dan really likes to bring a hot plate to the job and make lunch. And it's hilarious. He'll have a plate of these like gourmet looking tacos and he's standing on a pile of plywood. But Dan's also really good at building stuff. And so about a year ago, he went out on his own and he started his own business. And like any good friend would do, he knows that I do online marketing. So he came to me for free advice. And I was happy to tell him, dude, just get your Google business listing set up. And he whipped out his phone and he went to google.com slash business and he signed up and it took him like two or three weeks to get the postcard and to get his listing verified and to get it online. But almost immediately he started getting phone calls. And even I was blown away by that. I didn't expect him to get a few calls a week from prospective customers with just a listing. The guy doesn't have a website, he doesn't have a logo, like he doesn't have anything. All he did was create this listing, but it was getting results for him. And here we are like a year later and he still gets a few calls a week. He still doesn't have a website. <laughs> and that's why I say, if you can get Google Maps to work for you, you really don't need anything else. Um, but most companies, for most companies, it's not quite that easy. You know, definitely they, they start a Google listing, but usually you have to do a bit more than just sign up. And so that's what this video is about. It's about the things that you can do beyond just getting set up properly. And the, the things I'm gonna share with you, are they're from experience. You know, my team and I, we've tested, we've tried all sorts of different things, and Google is changing constantly. And that's why I always say, you know, I've said it a million times even during this SEO series is that customer experience is has to be the guiding star, the north star, the guiding light. Like if you're going to worry about one thing, it's got to be customer experience because that's going to be maintained through all of the changes Google makes. Because the changes Google makes, they do they're they're trying to do two things. They're trying to optimize their customer's experience, their customers being people that use their search engine. And they're trying to cut out all the people that are trying to game the system. And so by doing those two things, a lot of people get kind of messed up because their whole strategy was to game the system. And that's why my strategy is always optimized for customer experience. Because I know from experience that every time Google changes their algorithms, I'm gonna be rewarded and the people that are trying to game the system are gonna just be cleared off the table, which is good for me. All right, so let's get into these five things. But right before I do that, let's quickly talk about um, how are we measuring these results. So Google Maps, if you log into it, it's called Google My Business. I call it a Google Business Listing. I know it's confusing because there's so many different names for the same thing. But when you log in, you can navigate to the Insights tab. And this is where you can see how many uh, searches your listing is showing up for. You can see what keywords people are typing in to find it. And most importantly, you can see how many calls and how many website visits are coming directly from your listing. So before you make any changes, you wanna go here, look at your stats and take a screenshot of them 
so that you can come back in a month or two after you change some things and see if things got better or things got worse. If you do these things right, things will surely get better, especially if your listing isn't really set up that well, which is 99% the case when I look at listings. All right, so let's get into these things. All right, so number one. Number one thing is that Google sees you as a brand. So what does that mean? Well, think about any brand. Um, a brand name, the name of your business, your logo, your social media page, you know, all of these things go into your brand. And Google these days really values brands. That means that they're looking all over the internet for mentions of this business. This business right here is called The Remodeling Company. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just thought they were a good example of using social media. And all that means is that they're posting on this regularly. You know, it doesn't have to be every single day, but Google's paying attention to this stuff. Google robots scour the internet. They crawl every website that they possibly can, and Facebook is one of the main ones they crawl often. So, you know, compare two businesses. One of them has a website and a Google listing, and that's it. It never changes, it's static. For all Google knows, that business could not even be doing anything. Like the, the owner can be sitting at home eating chips on the couch. They don't know that. Um, and then compare them with this business who's constantly posting on Facebook about the projects they're doing, they're posting pictures, they're getting likes, they're getting comments, they're getting engagement. Google's gonna look at them and be like, okay, this is an active business. The keywords that we're reading in these comments suggest that they're actually doing remodels. We're gonna show them more often. And that's kind of how it works. So social media um, citations, which I talk about in one of the previous SEO videos, um, just as many mentions as possible about your brand name around the internet is what that's all about. And we've seen noticeable improvements just based off of our customers who have consistently posted on social media. We, and some of, some of the leads even come from social media, so it's really never a bad idea. So if you're not taking advantage of any kind of social media, just do it. Just post some things, share some pictures, do whatever, but make sure that there's more mentions of your brand around the internet. All right, number two is location-related content and title tags. So what do I mean by that? So on my, let's go to my website here, kyleconstruction.com. Now, if you Google search a remodeling contractor in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, you can see that our business is showing up right here in the top three. The top three being the ones that show up here at all. If I click view all right here, I'll see dozens of other companies, but only the top three show up at the top of the Google search. All right, and okay, so one of the contributing factors to that is that I mention our city on my website all over the place. General Contractor in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. My title tag is the same thing, General Contractor in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. If I do a site search for my site colon kyleconstruction.com and look at the title tags, you can see that I mentioned Coeur d'Alene all over the place. And by doing that, I'm building the relevance of my website to our city. And Google notices that and it thinks, okay, this city equals this remodeling company. They go together. And we've noticed significant improvements just from doing that. If you look at this map, you'll see that my, like Coeur d'Alene is down here at the bottom. I actually live in Dalton Gardens, which is another city. And it's very difficult to get your listing to show up in another city. But I was able to achieve that by making sure that my website mentions Coeur d'Alene all over the place. Because that's what people are searching for. People aren't searching for remodel contractor in Dalton Gardens. Dalton Gardens is like this big. There's only like, I don't know, a hundred houses in there or something like that. Uh, but Coeur d'Alene is much bigger. The population's bigger and that's just what people type into Google. So that's what I made sure was all over my website. So 
Um, you know, this isn't location pages. This is just every page on my website, bathroom remodeling, Coeur d'Alene, basement remodeling, Coeur d'Alene. That's, that's really all it is. Mention your area on your website all over the place. Make it clear. Now, it's not just for Google. It's for customers, too. I want customers to know that, I, that I'm in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, that's the first thing they're looking for. They want If someone types in a remodel contractor, they're looking for the words remodeling contractor, and then they're looking for their city to confirm that they're in the right place. If they don't see those things, they're going to be wondering in the back of their mind, is this company even in my city? Like, am I in the right place? And if there's a list of contractors and only one of them says the city, they're going to default to that one because it's most obviously what they're looking for. So number three is reviews. So reviews being Google, Ma Google Maps reviews. These things right here, 12, five out of five. And you can see if you look at this, let's make it a little bit bigger. There's three here and I'm on the bottom, which could be a disadvantage, but my review is the only one showing here and it makes my listing bigger than the rest. Great contractor to work with from start to finish doesn't say that about anybody else it says that about us and that little review gets more people to click on our web, our listing first and that's what reviews are all about reviews are about letting people know what it's like to work with your company and if you can get those reviews to broadcast on Google like this one does then you're gonna have a huge advantage over your competition and you wouldn't believe I mean you might be one of them so you would believe but you wouldn't believe how many people don't get reviews or just have like one look if you're making people happy with your services you need to be getting reviews we've had you know we had 10 about six months ago or something like that we don't get that many we only have 12 um, but that's because we just don't need that many um, a lot of people that come work with us say that they initially chose us because of our reviews and then a lot of people also say they chose us because of our website so those two things combined help us get a lot of customers and it's just an easy thing to do another benefit of reviews on google over like home advisor angie's list or one of those other lead reselling companies is that you don't pay for your google listing once it's active you don't have to pay to maintain it. Uh, if you have a hundred reviews at Angie's List and you stop paying for your listing and your, their service, your reviews are gonna become useless because they're never gonna be seen by anybody. Google Maps, on the, on the flip side, it's free. And once you have these reviews, if you're showing up here in the top three like I am, your reviews are seen by thousands of people. Um, you know, just depends on how many, what your population is, but those reviews are going to be seen by tons of people. And over years, each one of those reviews can become worth tens of thousands of dollars to you. A really good review that converts more traffic into leads can become a huge asset for you. So there's just no reason not to do this. Uh, a lot of guys are like uncomfortable asking or whatever. Just ask for it. It's not that big of a deal. All right, number four is called GMB categories. So when you make a Google business listing, you choose what categories you show up for. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that there's subtle differences between categories. And you can learn, you can learn more about this by typing these categories into Google search and looking at what Google shows you because that's Google literally telling you what it thinks that word means. And a common one I see is painter versus painting. Tons of painters use the painting category, but painting in Google's eyes refers to like art, like a painting studio or canvases or painting supplies. A painter is someone who actually goes to your house and paints. So if you're, a, if you're trying to get painter jobs, and you're using the category painting, you're at a huge disadvantage because Google's misunderstanding what you do. And so when you're choosing categories, just be very careful about what you're doing and do some Google searches yourself typing these categories in, painter near me, painting near me, 
and look and see what Google's showing you and use that information to craft the rest of your listing. The last one, number five, is your GMB services. So this goes hand in hand with the categories that I just showed you. So when we went to Google and we typed in painter near me, these are the other keywords that Google showed us. And so that's what we added in as services, exterior painting, interior painting, painting doors, staining. These are the things that Google associates with a painter. And so we made sure that we included those in the services. Now, it's not all about Google, it's also about your customers. So you also want to be clear to your to your prospective customers of like what different services you do. And you don't want to be adding services that you don't do. Um, but when it comes to SEO and showing up on Google Maps, this is one of the easy things you can do is go in and just add the various services that you do offer and try your best to use the words that Google uses when you do these searches. So those are the five things that you can work on. And I guarantee if you go and you change those things, you're going to see an improvement in the insights. So don't forget to go back and look at the GMB insights and take another screenshot of those things, of, the, of those charts and measure your results. And as uh, an SEO professional and as a marketing professional, we're constantly doing this. We look at these charts every month, we'll make slight changes and then we'll go back and we'll measure if things get worse we'll change them back if things get better we'll mark it down in our notes so that we are tracking this and then over time you just get really good at knowing how this stuff works and it becomes intuitive for you to like make things in a way that Google's going to show you and so anyways I hope this video was valuable for you if you have questions, put them in the comments. If you need help getting your Google listing set up, go over to my other video, the Foundational Marketing Mini Course. Uh, I don't remember what number it is, but you can just search through my channel. And if you, you think content like this is valuable for you and you wanna be alerted when I post more videos, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, I hope, hope to see you on the next one.